Hi friends, my name is Borrodante. Let's talk about turning sketch into a painting. So it's been quite a popular request recently to make a tutorial about how to actually move from a line art into a non-line art graphics, how to actually make that transition, because I remember myself back in the day, it was quite hard to make that transition, but once I did it, I never stepped backwards, like I always finished my paintings to the end, like I never just ended up with colored sketches, kind of, even when they have like shadows, it's really hard to just turn off the outlines and actually know what to do. So this is what this video is gonna be about, I suppose. So to demonstrate, let's use one of my recent sketches I did just for no reason at all. You can find this and a few other ones on my Instagram. I just drew this zombie guy that suspiciously looks a lot like me. So yeah, let's move on. As, as you can see, it's kind of a little bit rendered already, that it has kind of like shadows. Let's actually remove shadows, because we should start from the beginning. So step number one, fill in your character or any object or objects that you have in the scene. Oh, also, before starting anything at all, make sure you have a proper sketch. Tiny lines, no hatching, no imitation of lighting with your lines. Meaning don't do any of this kind of stuff, like actually going with the darkness, like imitating some kind of lighting, some kind of shadows on the character. We do not need that for the sketch. It's not a disaster if you have that in the sketch already, but really don't do that. If you still haven't done it, don't do that. Have a clean sketch with very tiny lines. The smaller the lines, the better you're forced to think through all the details of the geometry before you actually start to work on the color. And when you fill in the character, you can choose any color you want. We'll decide on the color afterwards. It's important to have a good, well done silhouette. And if you have a background, let's actually add just a spot for a background, just to you know, have it technically there. Something like that. You can go with all the way, like, going the full sketch. Now, we have the background layer and the character color layer. Now, from this point, first step in actual rendering. What to start with? Start with air perspective. That's what I usually think through. And I'm not even sure that this is actually a common thing, that all the artists do that. But really, I think it's a good idea. In this case, we actually go with this greenish sort of air perspective, meaning the fog, the mist in the background will be going into this color, slightly green. Just because it's a zombie, it's a good idea to follow this kind of theme. So we have that. Now, this is our main gamma. Let's say that here, just the color, just to know this particular hue color and the saturation that is almost gray. We need that, this is really important. Now, in the main layer, let's fill in our character, like we lock the transparency, it's a good idea to go like that always. So right now, let's fill in the character with air perspective color, but closer to black. The point of that, that air perspective, as a fog, it has this effect that it eats away all the colors from the darkness. It lowers the contrasts of whatever you can see. Like some, when something is far away in the distance, in the background of the painting, it's usually really pale and light. There's no dark shadows, never any dark shadows if it's far away. So that's the point. But the thing is that our perspective basically works everywhere. And even on the character that's like the closest, the nearest object to us, we still don't go into complete black when we render the shadows on this character. So right now we're gonna choose the darkest color, meaning how much of that air perspective gets in between us and the character. So how far away is this zombie into the fog? I wanna go a bit brighter than this, maybe even. Yeah, like this. Let's try it out. I always... The soon I start explaining something, I start experimenting myself and I don't know half of the thing I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, by the way, you can see I have some hatching on this sketch, I just noticed. Let's actually erase it. Like, we don't need this shadow. It was a really good idea to do that for the sketch if it was just going to be a sketch. But in this case, it will be hard for us to use it afterwards. 
And it's gonna look kind of gross now <laughs> because of erased lines like that. And something like that. Just some meat or whatever. Gross stuff. So now we have this, the fully opaque character filled in with air perspective color, which is like a base for everything. Now, if you decide to go with a really dark air perspective, you remember that sometimes I just invert the sketch or something. Let's actually go like this, it feels like it's gonna be way better to see everything this way. So anyway, we have this. We decided on air perspective, we decided on how close the character is to us, meaning how much of that fog or how foggy it is in the scene. Maybe we want to make it like super foggy, then we would choose a lot brighter color for the base. So anyway, pretty simple for now, right? Now let's create this new layer and clip it, clip mask it to the main layer, to the silhouette. This is one way to do it if you want to go fast. Now, the next thing we have to decide on, after air perspective and its density and all, is what kind of light do we have in the scene? Because everything we're gonna see ever when it's actually rendered is the light reflected by the objects. So we have to know where this light is coming from. What kind of light is it? So, in this case, I want to have a really strong rim light on the side, like this, and it just stops somewhere in the middle of the character, so it's gonna be lighting up from this angle. It's like if this character is inside of an old house, and there's a window with the broken glass or something, and the bright daylight is hitting him from the back. But he's running at us, and it's dark inside of the room. And we're lighting him up with a flashlight. So we're gonna use the combination of this bright sunlight from the back, the bright rim light, plus the direct light from the front. The kind of thing we did in SCP-096 recently. So, this kind of combination I think is gonna work really cool because we can play with some translucency on the ear and on the fingers. It's gonna look pretty great. Plus a really scary kind of rendering from the front when the light is like from the flashlight. So we have that idea. Now let's think about what it means. When we have a flashlight, it will probably be of white color. So it's pure colors of the objects without any distortion from the warm or cold color. And then when we'll add some sunlight, we'll have to make colors a lot brighter and more warm in order to simulate the warm color of the light. So let's do that. Now we create one first layer and we clip mask it Again, if you're new to this, clip masking means everything we're gonna paint inside of this new layer will be cropped by the transparency of our silhouette of the character. Really handy. Now, let's go from the bottom to the top. It's usually the best strategy. What does it mean? It means that this character has a lot of his bare skin exposed. And on top of that skin, there's hair, shirt, and jeans. So that means that basically skin is the basic layer. This is really important to think through what goes on top of what. It's a good strategy, it will save you time and kind of actually will improve some quality. So anyway, let's choose on the color of the zombie. So he should be kind of pale, kind of greenish, but greenish comparing to a normal pink skin. So that means he goes a bit closer to yellow, let's go like this, just yellow color. And really pale and a bit darker, I think. So this is a good color, I believe, to fill in the skin of the zombie. You see, I don't think about any silhouettes whatsoever, because this is the bottom layer. It's gonna be at the very bottom and all the other layers of other colors of other pieces of clothing and everything, they will be covering up this layer on top. So we'll define the silhouettes of the shirt, we don't have to define the silhouettes of the skin. I hope that's clear. <laughs> So, now you see I filled in all the colors of the skin except for the arm. Can you guess why? Because the arm is in front of everything, is the nearest object to us. And that means it's covering the shirt with itself. So we'll add this arm later, it's gonna be the closest object. Keeping that in mind, we can actually add the color of the shoe right now. Because it's also at the bottom and it's behind these jeans that we're gonna add on top. So let's add the color of the shoe. I want the shoe to be kind of white. Now, what is white? We can't go with the actual white color. Same as actually with all the other color. I said that uh, it's really good that the light of the flashlight is white, but we still have the ambience of this air perspective. 
Air perspective has the color of the fog. And what does it mean that the fog is of some color? That means that in the scene, there's this ambient light of everything. Like, it's just... It's not from any specific light source. It's just the way the whole area is being lit. The overall color of the soft light everywhere. And in this case, it's kind of this greenish color. So, this gives us a hint on what kind of color do we choose for black and white. Black color is going to be literally this darkest color in this object, because this is the whole thing about our perspective, that it doesn't allow anything else to be darker than this. That means that black will always hit this color, unless it's like really brightly lit. And same goes for white, we actually grab this color of black and move it way higher. And I think we should stop at this point, somewhere right here. So this is the white shoe. Maybe a bit brighter so we would have a better contrast with the skin. Yeah, so this is actually white comparing to that greenish skin color. So this is the one layer that we have right now. All the bottom objects in the scene. Now we create a new layer and clip it again to the same silhouette of the character. And let's actually add right now this front arm. You see I switched from bateau brush to chiyoko brush, like it has a nicer silhouette, doesn't ruin the picture, because the, right now we're working on the silhouette of the object, and actually it's a good chance, I used to think that it's like a good idea to just quickly define some random silhouette and that's it, but really there's no reason to go sloppy when you start rendering. You can go with really accurately defined silhouettes, one thing you have to make sure, though, is that you will define these silhouettes once. That means never paint two objects that are close to each other that share a common edge. Don't paint these two objects like the shirt and the arm. Don't paint them in one layer, because you need this edge to be constant. You have to be able to paint quickly on it without risking to ruin it. So we'll just define these objects in separate layers and lock the transparency on them. So right now, basically, what we're doing is just coloring the sketch in a very simple way. But there's a lot of things going on in our head, because we have to think through what kind of gamma we have. Basically, think of this greenish color that we apply to everything as the main gamma, like, main color theme of your painting. Because that's the kind of thing any painting should have. You shouldn't actually use all the colors in the painting. It actually won't look very good. So here we are, filled in this front arm. And let's use the same layer to fill in maybe hair. So I think hair should be slightly brighter than black and slightly more brownish. Let's actually use the skin color, make it darker and a bit closer to red. Yeah, I think it will look good the combination of this skin with this hair. Nice soft colors, looking good. You see I have really messy silhouettes on the character because I did it before this tutorial when I was actually sketching it and it has super glitchy silhouettes. That's the bateau brush. I used the bateau brush to quickly fill in the silhouette and now I'm paying for it. Let's go ahead and fill in some detailed streaks of hair here. And the best way, I'm using this thick brush, but then I use eraser and kind of remove like this. So this creates a nice shape, nice design of the stroke. And let's add the eyebrows. Nice thick eyebrows on this character, looking very attractive. Oh yeah, nice. So this is good enough for now, just filling in everything so we could think through main lights and then we can merge everything together and work on the details more specifically. For now this is the stage when we don't turn off the sketch. This is like an easy part, right? So in between this layer and the bottom skin layer we create a new layer and let's add a t-shirt. What color would it have? Oh yeah, this looks great. Yeah, it's good like to have a noticeable difference in values and color, but it also is a good idea to not go too far. Make subtle changes, it looks a lot prettier, just nicer to the eye. It's not exactly about the laws of rendering, but it's just a law of design and how to make things look nice. And you can see we didn't have to bother to follow the silhouettes of the arm, because it's in the top layer. 
So now we have a t-shirt. Now let's add jeans. Jeans, I think, would look really good if they would be like almost gray, but a little bit blue. Okay, I don't like that the shirt is touching the jeans a little bit. So let's actually move the jeans into a separate layer. Oh, actually, let's use the layer with the arm and the hair, because they are not touching each other. So, like that, you don't have to use a lot of layers, just use the ones that would be enough for you to avoid any intersections of silhouettes. Mm, I think I want to make the jeans a little bit darker. Same color, just even more deep, like this. Yeah, cool. So we have this. Let's add to the layer of the t-shirt the color of laces and the bottom line of the shoes. And it should probably be black, so we'll use this air perspective color here. And I'm going with these kind of not very defined strokes for the laces, because they were the same way in the sketch, and this is really what I wanted to go, like, the back limb can go into less of the detailed look. But you should still keep in mind that the design of these quick strokes should be maintained to still look cool. So right now I'm kind of thinking through where should I like chop off a little bit the strokes to make them look cool, have some sort of dynamics to it or something. As much as you care at this point. This might be a quick work or something. This is totally gonna be really quick since it's just a tutorial. So yeah, good enough. Now let's add another layer and add the belt. That's what I forgot to add. Looks good, looks like actual brown distorted by green light. So I think it's working out pretty good. Like that, and let's add another probably layer to add all the details that cover up the belt. Like that. Everything else, like tiny buttons and whatever, that can be added at the very end. It's not gonna actually influence much. And it's not like you need to decide too much on the lighting on these. So this is it, mostly. Sure, there are like eyes, for instance, but eyes, it's really easy to work with them. Or we'll add them in a moment, I guess. So at first we just fill in what we see. And we see this. It looks kind of cool the way it is right now, right? Kind of like a flat style. So now we'll lock the transparencies on all the layers. Meaning using this thing if you're in Photoshop. So now choose some kind of like soft brush. I usually love going with a soft brush. And now we're adding shadows to all the objects with this black, but not... Hold it right there, my past self. You're about to be saying a whole lot of nonsense for an hour. So I'm gonna stop you and continue this tutorial next week. So yeah, the point is I didn't really like the way the rest of the tutorial went. So I'll try again from this point in the next session. So for now this is it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that would be it. Bye.